Day 19. We got a little bit of a break from the heaviness of the topics yesterday, but it's going back into it. Yeah, we're going to be talking more about the conditions that Assange is going to be put in when he's sent over to America, land of the free and the home of the brave, etc., etc. And this one, more so than usual, I'll be switching between the coverage of Craig Murray and Kevin Gastola. So bear with me on that, but we'll start with Murray. He said that today was the worst day for the defense since the start of the trial as their expert witnesses failed to cope with the sheer aggression of cross-examination by the U.S. government and found themselves backing away from maintaining positions they knew to be true. It was uncomfortable viewing. Yeah, this is why you don't allow prosecutors to badger witnesses. Because that's what happened. But they're following their prosecution template, which Murray describes as Undermine academic credentials is not precisely relevant. Humiliate by repeated memory tests, their little, you know, trivial pursuit pop quizzes, questions of precise phrasing of obscure regulations or definitions. Denigrate the relevance of practical experience. Iterate official positions and challenge witnesses to say they're expressed by named officials in bad faith. Humiliate by asking witnesses to repeat from memory regulations for expert testimony in UK courts. Run through a list of qualifications and government positions relevant to the subject and make witness say one by one they have not held them. And claim testimony is biased or worthless because it does not include the holy government writ at full length. Yes, you have to acknowledge absolutely everything the government says if you want to be unbiased. And Murray says, you will note that none of this has anything to do with the truth of the actual evidence. And to date, almost all witnesses have easily, sometimes contemptuously, seen off this intellectually shallow method of attack. But today was another story. It was obvious to any reasonable person that the prosecution claims of the good conditions in the American Prison Service for high-profile national security prisoners are just nonsense. But it was a day when the divorce between truth and court process was still plainer than usual. So the first witness giving evidence by video link is Yancey Ellis. He's very familiar with the Alexandria Detention Center where Assange will be held pre-trial. And that includes the administrative segregation block, ADSEG or X block where high-profile and national security prisoners are held, of whom Assange is absolutely one. I think it's hilarious when the prosecution tries to claim otherwise. Pre-trial detention, he said, could last many months or even years. Isolation from other prisoners is the purpose of the X block. Prisoners are in tiny cells of approximately 50 square feet, which is under 5 square meters. The bed is a shelf. On a daily basis, only 1 to 2 hours are allowed outside the cell, into a small area outside at a time when no one else is there. The second hour was generally available only in the middle of the night, so was not utilized. And from the sounds of it, the way it was portrayed in Orange is the New Black is very accurate to how they actually are. Edward Fitzgerald asked him whether prisoners in administrative segregation could associate. And so this part I'm going to go over to Gastola, because he has a little more detail in Ellis' testimony here. In 1X Adseg, the cell doors are made of thick steel, and the windows are a transparent, thick plexiglass material with no slots or holes. I have tried to speak to my clients through these doors, and it is very difficult, even when standing several inches away. I find it implausible that inmates could really communicate in this way unless they constantly screamed at loud volumes. I would routinely have to ask for a deputy sheriff to open the cell's food tray slot in order to be able to speak with a client. And then Kromberg, yes, they keep going back to Kromberg. Kromberg's lie about detainees communicating with one another is part of the U.S. government's efforts to deceive a British court into believing Assange would not be subject to conditions of solitary confinement. However, as Ellis declared, 1x ADSEG is essentially the same as solitary confinement. So going back to Murray, Fitzgerald pointed out, the ADSEG regime Ellis described was even without the addition of special administrative measures which bring additional restrictions. Ellis confirmed none of the clients he represented was subject to SAMs. He confirmed they did get phone access, but only to a service that allowed them to send pre-recorded phone calls to relatives. 
The Alexandria Detention Center does not employ a doctor. Medical services were provided by a private firm. Asked about suicide risk, Ellis said prisoners could be made to wear a special suit and had shoelaces, belt, etc. removed. And next to special suit, Murray writes, straight jacket? In brackets with a question mark. Wondering if that's what he's talking about, but... I know they don't use straight jackets anymore in proper mental health facilities because they're considered inhumane. And there are better ways of doing it. But in the court system, who knows? I mean, there are things that are not quite straight jackets, but that can be used to restrain someone temporarily for like a few minutes. But, I mean, it's just considered brutal to have to wear them for an extended length of time. All right, James Lewis cross-examined. And Murray says that he's giving it, once again, as a conversation. It is not a transcript. It would be illegal for me to take a transcript. No, I don't know why either. Because it's a farce of a trial. When a trial's not public, it's a farce. That's just all you need to know about it. So Lewis asks, Your info comes from visits and prisoners? Ellis, yes. Have you interviewed the governor? No. Have you interviewed the custodial staff? No. Have you interviewed the psychiatrist? And it just keeps going on like that. You know, trying to get him into that little rapid-fire thing of irrelevancies, and as we've seen, that's actually worked before to have them kind of have a knee-jerk reaction firing off a quick answer to uh, a question that really needs a little more of an answer to it. And that's a, a very disgusting tactic. But So according to Lewis, St. Kromberg says it was inspected on August 5th, 2019 by U.S. Marshals and found fully compliant. What do you say? Ellis, all right. Lewis, also the Commonwealth of Virginia inspected blah, blah, blah. There have been no suicides during the current inspection period. Ellis, they have a good track record when it comes to completed suicides. And that's completed suicides, the ones who actually went through it. That doesn't mean attempts or creating the conditions that make them want to commit suicide. Lewis, have you read these reports? Do you know the finding of these reports? You don't know how prisoners are assessed for different types of housing. Ellis, I have frequently asked for assessment reports in individual cases. I have never been given them. Lewis, Kronberg has stated that ADSEC prisoners have access to prisoner programs, but you have testified otherwise. But you have never represented federal prisoners, have you? Ellis, there is no difference in treatment inside the jail between state and federal prisoners. Lewis, were you asked by the defense to state that ADSEC is solitary confinement? Ellis, no. Lewis, there is unlimited access to your lawyers. That is not considered in your definition of solitary confinement. Ellis, not unlimited. Lewis, ADSEC prisoners have library access? Ellis, rarely. They may be able to go there in their time outside the cell, but only if it can be empty at that time so they do not meet anybody. And a bit later, Lewis, how do you know Assange won't be kept in the medical wing? Ellis, high-profile prisoners are not allowed to mix with the general population. Lewis, but won't Mr. Assange benefit from a phalanx of lawyers questioning his conditions? Don't you think his publicity and support will bring better treatment? What publicity? Ellis, I don't know that will be the effect. And then Fitzgerald re-examines for the defense. Uh, Fitzgerald asks, why do you say Assange will be kept in the H-block? Ellis, it's the design of the jail. Nowhere else a long-term ADSEG reporter could be held. Fitzgerald, on prisoner programs, you say they would not be possible if it involved meeting another prisoner. Ellis, yes, and there are no individual programs. So for the first time in the trial, Bereiter herself now asks a question of the witness. She asked why he thought Assange would not be held in the general prison population as he currently was at Belmarsh. Ellis said it's because he's a public figure in a high-profile case. Bereiter suggested that in the UK, being a high-profile figure did not mean different treatment. Ellis said he was simply recounting the actual practice of the Alexandria jail in such cases. And Murray says, Bereitzer's intervention was extraordinary given she had heard irrefutable evidence from Dr. Blackwood that Assange had been placed into isolation in the medical wing in Belmarsh after somebody took a brief snatch of him. You remember that when I covered it a couple of days earlier to prevent reputational damage to the prison. Yes, now she was saying high-profile prisoners in the UK are not removed from the general prison population. She seems to have an infallible mental filter for blocking inconvenient information. 
Her less subconscious filter was next in evidence, as there was time for a quick procedural judgment for the next witness on the question of the decision of the prison governor on Julian Assange in the razor blade in the cell case. And you remember I covered this. They're trying to deny that the razor blade was even there, and then they walked back on their denial, say they never denied denying it, or whatever. I don't remember. I can't even keep track of the prosecution's lies at this point. But basically, paragraphs 1 through 18 include all that information about the decision to put Assange in solitary confinement disguised as health care, including the fact that Belmarsh chief medic Dr. Daly had not produced one of the compulsory monthly medical reports in his five months in the medical wing. And Murray writes, In one of those accommodations I find inexplicable, the defense conceded, without forcing Bereitzer to a judgment, that paragraphs 1 to 18 should be ignored and only paragraph 19 accepted as evidence, on the understanding that it did establish the existence of the razor blade and thus vindicate Professor Kopelman's judgment and showed the charge had merely been dismissed as not timeless. And that's actually good because it does refute what we were talking about earlier because the judge was trying to use the fact that it was dismissed as proof that there was no evidence for a razor blade. Well, guess what? Paragraph 19, which is the only one she said she would accept, does say that the razor blade exists. So. Murray says that Ellis's cross-examination above reads very well, and he did provide good answers to the prosecution attack, but he sounded rattled and nervous, and the performance was less convincing than it reads. This was to get much worse for the defense. With the next witness, Joel Sickler, he testified that, in line with policy, Assange would be placed in ADSEG due to his involvement in national security issues and concerns he might pass secrets on to other prisoners. He might also be categorized as needing protection from other prisoners and from self-harm. He would have zero to very limited contact with other prisoners. Sickler characterized Kronberg's claim that inmates could communicate with each other through the steel doors and thick plexiglass windows as ridiculous. And so here I'm going to go back to Gastola. And he's mentioning the secure housing units or shoes. And he says, and this is Gastola quoting him, There's a lot of noise and a lot of screaming. It renders people angry and confused. And there's a lot of yelling. To have a discourse between inmates for social reasons is a little preposterous. There is significant sensory deprivation compared to isolation in a cell. There is little natural light as well as access to fresh air. There is no communication allowed with other prisoners. There is usually one 15-minute phone call to family allowed per month, and all calls are monitored. The inmates are denied access to information regarding current events, with all materials being censored. Placement in the ADSEG unit at the ADC could compromise Mr. Assange's ability to focus on and assist his attorneys in his defense, for reasons related to how debilitating the experience can be for a prisoner. And going back to Murray, Sickler mentions he had a client who was not subject to SAMS, but was still effectively in solitary confinement for 20 years, despite a clean conduct record. Fitzgerald asked about a provision of medical and psychiatric care, and Sickler said that across the federal system, he had dozens of clients who had found a way to commit suicide. Assange will be kept in the SSU known as the H-Block. With or without SAMs, contact with other prisoners will be completely barred. Contact with the outside world would be extraordinarily limited. Any contact permitted with family would be monitored by the FBI. One 15-minute phone call was allowed per month. Post-conviction, contact with lawyers was very limited. Fitzgerald asked how you could appeal SAMs or other prison conditions. Sickler replied that appealing even over minor administrative matters virtually never succeeds. Sickler had filed many thousands of requests on prison conditions, and perhaps a dozen had succeeded. With SAMs, there was effectively no chance. And so they referenced that affidavit by Dr. Allison Leukfeld for the government, which looked great on paper but was not the practice. On the other hand, reports by organizations like the Marshall Project exactly matched with his practical experience. Official statistics, like only 3% of federal prisoners having mental health problems, quote, do not ring true to me. There was a significant risk Assange would not receive adequate physical and mental health care. And then Claire Dobbin comes up for the rapid-fire cross-examination. And there's a lot of, you're not a prison inspector? No. You're not an academic? No. Not a psychiatrist? No. Not a researcher? No. Blah, blah, blah. And she says, but you said clearly in your affidavit that you have SAM clients. 
Did you put that there because you want to give the impression you have more expertise than you do? Sickler, of course not. Dobbin, you have never been to the ADSEG area of Alexandria Detention Center, so what is your opinion based on? Sickler, information given to me by numerous third parties, including my clients, other lawyers, and the public defender. Dobbin, but did you not think it was important to make plain in your statement this is hearsay? Sickler, I didn't see the distinction as important. Dobbin, prisoners in protective custody receive all the same services and rights as other prisoners? Sickler, of course. Dobbin, do you agree he would be able to attend programs with other prisoners? Sickler, not if under Sam's. Dobbin, the Alexandria Detention Center is not overcrowded. Sickler, no, it's below capacity. It is a well-run jail. The staff are very professional. Dobbin, Kronberg sets out very substantial medical staffing levels. Sickler, I understand those are mostly private contractors, not prison staff. In practice, prisoner needs are not meaningfully met. It takes a few days to a few weeks to get treatment. Dobbin, but they do get sufficient treatment? Sickler, there is no real psychiatric intervention. This is not top tier. Usually prisoners are just medicated. Dobbin, so they have access to medication? Really, Dobbin? That's what you got from that? So anyway, she says, the ADC has a good record on suicide. Sickler, it is a very arduous, almost torturous system of confinement in NADSEG. Assange has depression and is on the autism spectrum. It will be unbearable for him. Even with healthy clients of mine, there has been a terrifying deterioration in these conditions. Dobbin. The evidence is they are successful in preventing suicide at the ADC. Sickler. Yes, they have a stellar record. Somehow, I feel that was sarcasm. Because again, she's focusing on preventing the actual suicide and not the conditions that would lead them to suicide. So, Dobbin, you initially said in your report, Assange might not be sent to ADX. Now you change your mind. Sentencing is at the discretion of the judge. There is no basis for your report. Sickler, I changed my mind in the intervening period. From the second superseding indictment, the charge is now espionage, and the government alleges Assange is a continuing threat to the USA. So then she brings out the Kromberg Bible again, talking about stage three allowing contact with other prisoners. Again, you can read it yourself, but Sickler says, It sounds awful. Even when you reach phase three with the extra privileges. If they do that in practice, well, that's wonderful. It still sounds awful to me. Yeah, I'm interpreting the that's wonderful part as sarcasm again. Dobbin, there is a progression. Sickler, I should like to know how long it takes. Dobbin, do you know the numbers who have come out of the ADX? Shouldn't you know these facts? Sickler, the place is torturous. That is not in dispute. Dobbin, Gordon Kromberg testifies that ADX Colorado has more mental health provision per inmate than any other federal prison. Sickler, that is needed because of the extreme circumstances people are kept in. Dobbin, a Department of Corrections report of 2014 shows that some inmates never want to leave ADX as they find the standard of care so good, they reoffend to get back in. Now that is absolutely sick that you would bring this up. The reason why is that they have been so psychologically abused that they are now mentally dependent on this rigidly structured system and they're unable to function in the real world anymore. She's making it sound like it's some kind of, you know, four-star accommodations. Oh, they're living in the lap of luxury. Come on. We all know that's not what the situation is. So, Sickler says, They cherry-pick whom they speak to. Most prisoners are desperate to get out. Dobbin. Every report gets an official response from the Board of Prisons, and policies are constantly upgraded. Sickler. Yes, but I just don't see the results in practice. And I'm going to switch back over to Gastola, because he gives a little more detail that Sickler had, representing an individual who had a mental breakdown at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York. He notified the administrators that he had a serious psychiatric disorder, but they dismissed him. He later acted out and was severely beaten by correctional officers, then thrown in the hole naked. Eventually, a federal court granted him bail, and the state wrote a writ for treatment at the Bellevue Psychiatric Center. Dobbin justified the inhuman treatment Sickler's client endured, saying this example showed that judicial oversight occurred. Although he was abused before he was sent to a psychiatric hospital, the system worked. I am really sick of this. 
from government cult apologists and their high priests, you point out some atrocity that occurred that took a long time to put right, and then they come back with, see, the system worked. Well, if that's the system working, what the hell does it look like when it's broken? So anyway, back to Murray. The cross-examination lasted two and a half hours. It seems much more convincing from Sickler written down than it did live, where he appeared shaken by the aggression. The answers he gave, which sound like firm responses, sounded petulant and throwaway when he delivered them. He gave the impression that it was not worth his time to engage with the unreasonable Dobbin, and while I heartily sympathize, that was not the requirement of the moment. Sickler very definitely gave the impression he was at times agreeing with the prosecutor just because that was the easier line of action. He often did so in a voice that suggested skepticism, sarcasm, or mockery, but that was not plain in his words and will not be apparent in the transcript. In all fairness to Mr. Sickler, being at home rather than actually in a court session will partly account for it, but the court record will say Sickler says prisoner provision in U.S. Supermax prisons is marvelous. It doesn't note sarcasm. Dobbin is officious, beyond the point of offensive. She comes over as properly obnoxious as a person. The unpleasant irony in all this is that both Sickler and Ellis were mocked and scorned for their lack of personal knowledge of ADX Colorado when prosecution and judge had combined just on Friday to bar two witnesses who the defense both wished to testify who had expert personal experience of ADX Florence. That is yet another striking example of the fact that this process is divorced from any genuine attempt to find truth or justice. And the next day, hate to break it to you, is more of the same, but uh, I would have condensed them both into one video, but this one's already gone a bit long. So I'll do a separate video for day 20. And until then, I'll just say, as usual, please share my videos or this audio file or however you got it. Share these blog posts and hit like, subscribe, and the bell to make sure you keep getting this. In the last one, I asked people to comment, and apparently there's no problem with it showing up in subscriptions, but I'm not seeing... A lot of evidence that is showing up in things like related videos, although I did have one person say that it was showing up on their YouTube homepage when they came in, which is actually pretty awesome, but I've only had one person say that, and I've asked them, I haven't heard back, but I think it might have only been that video, and so I'm wondering if the fact that I asked people to comment and more people were commenting, I think those comments kind of feed the algorithm and make it go towards the top. So if you could post in a comment and just post your reactions to this, the more comments we get, apparently the more willing YouTube is to elevate this in the homepage and the search results and related videos. It's worth a try at any rate. And as always, please go to donate.bogosity.tv. Give any little bit you can. Thank you so much. Until next time, stay strong and be free.